Over the weekend, SpaceX achieved a shocking feat by launching the Starship rocket for the second time and sending it into space. While many are still analyzing and passionately discussing the incredible success of the second launch, Elon Musk unexpectedly revealed the new launch date for the next Starship flight. Wow, it's truly insane with a launch schedule this early. So, when will the next flight happen? What does SpaceX need to do to be allowed to launch the Starship? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Well, let's set aside the commotion caused by the Starship explosion, which is currently stirring up the rocket enthusiast community the most. What's truly capturing the attention is a significant announcement from SpaceX's CEO. I bet we're in for another celebration during this year-end holiday season. Interesting, right? One day after the conclusion of the second Starship launch, Company founder and CEO Elon Musk stated that the third vehicle of Starship should be ready to fly in three to four weeks. This will pose technical readiness just before Christmas. To be honest, this announcement is truly astonishing. The first and second launches of Starship still feel like they just happened yesterday in my mind, and yet there's already a third launch schedule. But this is entirely possible because now, with the proven stability of the pad structure, they can significantly shorten the preparation time compared to the second launch. For SpaceX, the readiness for a new one is always present. Elon Musk further emphasized in a tweet, There are three ships in final production in the high bay, as can be seen from the highway. There are three Starship prototypes, Ship 30, Ship 31, and Ship 32. These spacecraft are undergoing meticulous preparations, laying the groundwork for upcoming missions. Ship 30 will likely head to Massey's for its first cryogenic test in the next few days. Meanwhile, the Orbital Flight Test 3 OFT-3 will follow, featuring the appearance of Ship 28 and Booster 10. When Booster 11, having completed cryogenic testing at Massey, has now arrived at the production site. It's noteworthy that Booster 10 has already successfully passed this pivotal testing phase and is currently in anticipation of a static fire test. This test will take place once the orbital launch mount is prepped and ready to host it. I foresee Booster 10 being positioned at the OLM within the next two weeks, and SpaceX has efficiently placed it on the engine installation stand in Megabay for further preparations. Moreover, SpaceX is poised to commence testing with Ship 28, utilizing existing test stands without the need for suborbital pad preparations. Ship 28 has completed most of its crucial installations, with the most notable being its heat shield tiles, which are more robust compared to those on Ship 25 from the recent flight. However, hardware readiness doesn't necessarily mean the third flight will take off right away. This largely depends on the government regulatory agency, the Federal Aviation Administration, or better known as the FAA. After Saturday's flight ended in the two explosions over the Gulf of Mexico, it grounded Starship and said, a return to the flight of the Starship Super Heavy Vehicle is based on the FAA determining that any system, process, or procedure related to the mishap does not affect public safety. SpaceX must go through legal procedures to ensure compliance and safety before proceeding with launches. The meticulous review process by the FAA will depend on the ongoing impacts and studies at the Starbase facility. I also do not know when it will conclude, but it's only just begun. SpaceX doesn't operate like a typical aerospace company, meaning it doesn't take years to produce a single prototype with meticulously certified and inventoried components. Instead, SpaceX is transitioning from one prototype to another, each iteration building on the results of previous tests with rapid and continuous changes to any component or system that needs attention. While this approach is highly effective in achieving rapid advancements, it doesn't align with regulatory bodies seeking careful attention to every aspect of vehicle development. The FAA, in particular, is the agency that grants licenses for rocket launches in the U.S. or by U.S. companies and is more concerned with the safety of people and property on the ground and in the adjacent waters. Currently, each rocket launch requires a launch readiness assessment, and they expect each test flight to be more successful than a landing failure with high lethality. When SpaceX desires a third Starship launch quickly, they must convince the FAA that the launch will pose minimal danger to lives or property outside of SpaceX's jurisdiction. As they did after the test flight in April, SpaceX will create a list of corrective actions to address the issues encountered in Saturday's launch. 
the FAA will review the list and ensure that SpaceX completes all actions related to public safety before issuing a new commercial launch license for the third Starship test flight. FAA regulations require companies with reusable launch vehicle licenses, like SpaceX's Starship, to meet an expected casualty limit for the uninvolved public of no more than 0 0.0001 per launch or one casualty per 10,000 launches. The risk to any one individual cannot exceed one in a million. This is stricter than what NASA performs in its safety analysis. For crewed flight, they seem to be okay with the risk of a total crew loss being one in 270. That's a requirement for commercial crew contracts. Additionally, another aspect that the FAA is concerned about is the flight termination system to prevent flights from veering outside the permitted area. We can see that this might not be a hindrance for the third Starship launch anymore. Because with the second Starship launch, they seem to have successfully tested the system's effectiveness as the rocket veered off course and immediately self-destructed. As part of the process, SpaceX not only needs to satisfy the FAA, but also requires the approval of U.S. fish and wildlife officials. The most important upgrade, which the fish and wildlife officials focused their attention on, was SpaceX's new water deluge system. After the first launch, the agency's biologists were reportedly in disbelief that SpaceX at the time lacked flame suppression technology like this for Starship, an industry and space agency standard. Such systems are designed to dissipate some of the heat and noise generated by a rocket. SpaceX's new system involves flooding 358,000 gallons of water from ground tanks into steel plates and releasing them through holes in the plating, as the Fish and Wildlife Assessment describes. In April, Musk characterized it as a massive super-strong showerhead pointing up. In August, they found high levels of chromium and zinc, components of stainless steel and aluminum and iron in the water, but a subsequent test found lower concentration of those metals. This is also a positive sign indicating SpaceX's improvement. Assessments of this second test flight will show whether SpaceX's new system is effective at reducing debris and pollution. What's clear is that not having such a system won't work. Steel is a ductile material rather than a brittle one, and it can't fracture like concrete did on the first launch, says Phil Metzger, a planetary scientist at the University of Central Florida who studies space economics. Our analysis showed that the concrete fractured, the pressure drove hot gas through the cracks, the launch put the pad under tension and it blew apart. It was an explosion comparable to a small volcanic eruption. But Metzger believes the new deluge system will solve this problem and there are no significant risks of debris or contaminated deluge water. Yes, it's definitely going to be like that. Although we don't have precise results from the inspections yet, with the excellent performance of the upgraded launch pad, U.S. Fish and Wildlife officials might have more leisure time this time around because there doesn't seem to be significant damage to investigate. What SpaceX needs to do now is push forward with the production and testing of the vehicle hardware and address any remaining issues. In general, what SpaceX needs to focus on now has far fewer obstacles compared to the first Starship test launch, as they've almost completed their immediate goals, especially addressing environmental concerns, which was a major factor causing prolonged delays between each launch. Government agencies might greenlight Starship for launch sooner than we expect, while gaining FAA approvals delayed the Starship program by several months, the requirements imposed on the company regarding hardware changes and minimizing environmental impact are quite manageable. Elon Musk, after the launch, tweeted, Thanks to FAA and NFW News for rapid approval of a complex launch license. This proves that the relationship between Elon and these agencies has become more amicable than before. The third Starship flight is set to take off soon. Let's eagerly await it together. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.